Hey everyone, today I'm going to be explaining the S-Shake effect and three ways you can use it. When I say three ways, I mean three different shakes that you should hopefully be able to make by the end of this video, which includes a Y-Shake, a X-Shake, and also a Z-Shake, and also maybe a fourth one if you are creative enough. Now before I go through the effect itself and cover the settings, let me first explain what S-Shake actually is. So what's the purpose of S-Shake? It's quite obvious, to create shakes. That's what it does, it creates all kinds of shakes. As I just mentioned, X, Y, Z, a combination of the three axes, which I'll go into a bit more detail just in a second, Twitch shakes, shakes on text, and so on. So first of all, let me just show you this example. What do you see on this edit? Where do you see the shake? If you couldn't already tell, it's throughout the entire edit, it is a consistent shake. And I would say a lot of editors would refer this kind of shake as a twitch or a subtle twitch. It's very, very delicate, but really all it's doing is adding some motion. If I scrub frame by frame, you can see I've also got some slide transitions, but also the shake itself, which is adding a lot of motion and motion blur onto every single clip, making it look more dynamic overall. So this edit uses the X and Y axis. X is left and right, Y is up and down. The next example is different. This one uses the Z axis, which is backwards and forwards. So there is no use of X and Y at all. Take a look. Tell me where you see it. Did you see it there? Take a look one more time. Right there. You can see that on this clip, I have applied a Z shake because it bounces back and forth. So for example, this is frame one, frame two, and so on. If I play it in slow motion, you should hopefully be able to see it just a bit clearer. So if I just hit play, you can see the shake. So this one was X and Y, which is left and right, and also up and down. This one is back and forth. So once again, this one. That is the Z axis, and I am actually going to quickly draw it for you. So X, the shake moves left and right only. Y, it moves up and down. And unfortunately, I can't show you Z because it's back and forth. Let's just say you view this cube from a corner. Apologies for my horrible drawing skills, but it would look something like this. Ignore the quality of the actual drawing itself. This is X, left and right. This is Y, up and down. And the one that goes back and forth is Z. I've also got one other example to show you. Now, this is different, I would say. It's called a jug shake. So it still uses a shake, but it also uses a combination of other effects, such as distort chroma, for example, and warp bubble, which create distort like effects so wobbles and as i said distorts kind of effects so just take a look at this edit you can see i've been using a shake quite a lot so for example there on the text where it says look do you see how it bounces so that is a combination of a z shake and also i think x shake so if i just go frame by frame that definitely uses x shake because you can see it's coming from the left and also it uses z shake because it's bouncing back and forth and in fact it might actually be using some y shake as well because you can see it moves up just there, sort of like recenters itself. So yeah, this is another example of what a shake can be used for to create other kinds of shakes, not just simple X, Y, and Z shakes. Now, enough of that. Let's make an actual shake. However, before that, I need to explain the effect to you. So first of all, search up a shake. Remember, this will only be there if you have Sapphire installed. So assuming you have it installed, add this onto your clip. Now, the first setting is called amplitude and this basically controls everything because it's the master setting. So for example, if I were to set it to five, you can see how chaotic this shake looks. It's bouncing everywhere, almost like an earthquake. Now, if I were to turn it down back to one, let's say, you can see it's a bit more delicate. So the amplitude at the very top, because there are actually a few more amplitudes, for example, underneath the X shake, but I'm talking about the one at the very top. This controls the distance, how far the shake travels. So all of these settings, amplitude, frequency, phase, Z dist, their own settings will affect the settings of X, Y, Z, and so on. So to put it simple for the amplitude, it controls the spread of how far it can go. So as I said, five, the shake travels very far. If I did something like 12, even further. So I'm gonna leave it at one for now. The frequency, which is just below it, is how intense it can be. So the higher I set it, so let's just double it to 16, the stronger it is, so the faster it will be. This is one way editors can make a Twitch shake, which you have probably seen a lot across many kinds of edits. But if we wanted to go for something a little softer, we would turn it down. So for example, four. But if we think that's a bit too harsh, still go even lower. So half that, let's go two. 
and it looks like this very very delicate and now there is an issue we can see the reflection which sometimes isn't a problem but in this case it is but if i wanted to hide it just a bit more i could turn down the amplitude which as i said is the first setting so i could half that 0.5 we still retain that delicate bounce but the shake is a little tighter so you can see it looks like this which is very very soft underneath the frequency is phase i wouldn't really worry about it too much at the moment it's usually used when let's say okay so for example i can see the reflection of his chin for the first frame with a shake on now if i didn't want that so if i wanted another frame i could either turn it up or turn it down to a positive or negative value until i like it so as you can see it's gone but now we can see the reflection on the left side that's pretty much what phase is usually used for to like let's say hide other things certain areas or maybe just get a different look and it usually works best with something like a z shake and i'll explain why in a little bit the z disc is quite literally just the scale so how much it zooms out it doesn't really do much and you could just be using transform or the built-in uh, motion effect to just scale it in or out so i don't really touch that setting unlike motion blur this can come in use quite a lot and once again because i keep on mentioning this if you are making a twitch shake this will be very useful Twitch shakes need motion blur, so motion blur is necessary, uh, especially with a high frequency. So if I set it to, let's say, 6, and the amplitude to 1, with motion blur on, and also the motion blur length, which is the amount of motion blur, so I've just set it to 1 at the moment. I'll increase that in a second, but this is what we have at the moment so far. So as you can see, there is cl very clearly some motion blur, which obviously makes it look blurrier than usual. And if I crank it up to like 5 or even 10, but let me just do 5 for now, you can see it's even blurrier. And it looks closer to what we call a twitch shake. So yeah, motion blur, that's what it does. Now, are you familiar with keyframing? Because that is something that you need to know. If you don't, it's okay. I'll explain, but not in detail. When you click on the stopwatch for amplitude, so I'm just going to click this icon right here, it's going to place a keyframe. I've placed mine at the beginning and it's one. So the idea is to make it gradually slow down, I would say, over time as we reach the end of the clip. So I would head to the end of the clip, but usually what I do is I head one frame back, so not literally to the end, just one frame back so we can actually see the clip and I would set it to zero. And then from this point on, I could either just right click on the last keyframe and click and select ease in or open up the graph by clicking on the little arrow next to it and simply pulling this handle to the left. I know what you're thinking, what on earth is going on? This is called graphing and it basically controls how fast something moves from one keyframe to another. So if it was linear, so if I just reset it back to its original state. So let me just show you how it looks from one to zero with no graphing. So just the two keyframes. So this is what it looks like. And you know, it looks pretty decent. But let's say I want it to be quicker. I could simply just push this keyframe back. But the issue is it looks too stiff. So if I just play it, you can see it looks boring. I want the shake to gradually slow down over time rather than just stop at a certain point. So what I'm going to do is just grab this handle and pull it all the way to the left or just a bit as well. So I could leave it here and also pay attention to where it's leveled at. So you don't want it too high or too low. That can create issues. So we just want it leveled just like that. Now you can see how smooth it looks. And when we play it back, you can see it looks much better than before. It gradually slows down over time. If I were to pull it to make it as tight as possible, it would deaccelerate even faster, which is what most people go for when making a twitch shake. Remember that motion blur length setting? I feel like there's a bit too much of it. You know, it looks a bit too blurry, so I'm just going to cut it down to 2.5 just to hide that blur i mean it still looks blurry but better than before i think so this is what it looks like that also just made me realize that the higher the blur length amount is the stronger the shake usually looks so for example at the moment it's 2.5 you know that's fairly delicate but if i set it to something high so let's go 15 you can see it's much stronger and that's because there's more motion blur being added in between so it obviously looks more impactful than before okay so let me just set this back to 2.5 and now move on to the seed this is basically like the phase i think i mean that's how it's always worked for me so if i just increase it or decrease well you can't decrease it but it's just moving the position around of the shake so if you didn't like the first option 
so like this you could go for something else so like i just set it to 2.5 a random value which results in a different outcome so yeah it, I, I mean i like it but i'm going to keep it at zero for now and now if we just look at the wrap x and y most people keep these at reflect but maybe you might you know you might want to turn these off so if i just select no for both you can see that the reflections are no longer there and some people do like to have that because of their style perhaps okay so that's it for the main settings now let's break down the x shake and please pay attention because I'm going to be explaining the RAND amp, frequency, the wave amp, and also the frequency, which will apply both to the Y shake, Z shake, and also the tilt shake. So when you open up X shake, the first setting you'll see is X RAND amp, which means random. The amp means amplitude, just like the one we saw at the start. So it controls how far it travels. And the frequency, so the one just below, controls how strong, or should I say how powerful it is. Remember, rand equals random, which is messy. Unlike the settings underneath, which are called wave, now these are linear. They follow a pattern and usually look smoother. So what I'm going to do is actually show you an example. These both also have the same setting, so amp and also frequency. We have been using the rand amp for X at 192, which turned out looking like this. So just ignore the other settings for now. I know that this one, for example, the Y shake is at 96, but I'm just paying attention to the shake that moves left and right. So let me just turn this down all the way to zero and I don't have to change the RAND frequency because the amp has already been set to zero so it, w it just won't make a difference. I think that's the easiest way to explain it. But now what we're going to do is increase the wave amp. So as I said, it's linear. Linear means smooth. It follows a pattern. So I'm just going to set this to 100. Then I'm also going to increase the wave frequency to 1. So we're kind of following the settings we applied previously. So for example, the RAND frequency was set to 1. Now let's just take a look at how it looks. A very bouncy result you see how much better it looks though? The result that we had with random was messy. It was, well, random. Quite literally random. It was all over the place. But wave follows a pattern. And whichever you want to use on your clips is a matter of preference. I know it sounds so, like really really vague but it matters on your preference and also your editing style and also how suitable it may look on your clip so for example this one i suppose most kind of shakes would look suitable but again it depends on my song it depends on my style however any kind of shake works with this clip so that's rand and wave explained now let's just move on to the y shake which is up and down so if i wanted to go for a smooth y shake i would turn down the amount for the X wave. So I'm just going to turn that down to zero. And of course, anything else. So for example, the RAND amp, if that was set to something higher, just set it down to zero. We're just focused on the Y shake for now. So at the moment, you can see that the RAND amp has been set to 96. So this is what it looks like. Again, as I said, it's random, it's messy, and it may not look the best. So I'm just going to turn it down to zero and turn and also increase the wave amp. So I'm going to set that to 100. Now it's a linear bounce, much smoother than before. Let me quickly teach you how to make those smooth TikTok Y shake bounces. So usually I think what you would do is increase the blur length because they have a lot of blur. So at the very top, you know, the one that's set to 2.5, just set that to maybe 10. It may be a bit too much or too little. Again, we can always change it if we need to. I may also decrease the amp. So I'm going to go 75. Remember, this is for the wave. And also, I think that's it, to be honest. Let's take a look at how this looks. Wow, that's very smooth. What if we turn it down even more? So from 75 to 25 and but potentially even increase the blur length to 15. Would that look even smoother? It does, kind of. But the impact is fairly weak. So maybe I could increase the frequency so that it's a little stronger. You can see there is a lot of blur now. A bit too much, I think. But we will never know until I play it. So I think that's a bit too strong. Okay, yeah, let's turn it down. So maybe 0 0.25. Very, very smooth, but too slow. I'm going to turn it up to 0.5, I think, which was the default value anyway. So yeah, this is the result I have. So that's how you make a Y shake. Now, let's turn these back down to zero. So just that one. As long as the amps are set to zero, then you should be fine with the frequencies. They don't have to be changed. Let's make the Z shake. And also, this is what the clip looks like, by the way, just in case you are interested. So I'm going to open it up. I'm going to try RAND amp first. So it might be a bit like glitchy almost. I think a lot of glitch editors tend to use this setting. So let's just go 100 for now. And of course, turn down the motion blur because there's a bit too much. So I'm just going to go five for the motion blur. And this is the result, which is not too bad, even though it's random. I feel like I've been using a bit too much motion blur. So let me just turn that setting off for now. Completely different result. That looks very different to before. So when we had it on, 
Do you see that? It almost looks like it has a higher amplitude, even though it doesn't. So let me just uh, turn it back off and perhaps increase this to 300. Not so bad at all. So I wonder, what would it look like if we increase the wave amp? I'd say this is quite solid. It, it looks linear and yeah, it looks fine. So let's try it anyway. I'm going to set this to zero and the wave amp to 300. Increase the wave frequency to one, just like the RAN frequency. And okay, that's a bit too much, I think. Now, have you noticed on the first frame, it's showing me the edges fully and it looks hideous. However, as I said before, we have the option for the Z shake. Sorry, I meant phase. The Z phase in this case, so the other settings have their own, like Y phase, X phase, and of course the main phase, but this one has Z phase. And if I decrease or increase it, you can see it's moving. I think negative 0.2 looks really good. It looks better than before, but if we just play it back, it looks a bit too choppy. I mean, we've even got like two frames here with similar values. I've just realized that at the very top, the phase was actually set to 0.6. So if I reset that, you can see it looks completely different. That fixed the issue and this is the result. I'm also going to turn it down, so I'm just going to go 150. Decrease the wave frequency just so it's a bit more soft. And there you go. Perfect. Let's pair this with a Y shake. So if I just scroll up to the Y shake and what should we go for? Random or wave? Let's go wave for now just so it looks smooth. So I'm going to set it to 25 and I'm going to leave the frequency at 0.5. I think that's fine. So this is the result and it's not very noticeable. I'm not sure why. It might be because the value is too low because again, as I said, it's linear. Oh wait, that's the wrong setting. I That's Y shake, not X shake. Turns out I need this tutorial myself because I can't remember what these mean. So let me just reset that back to zero and increase the X, which is left and right, to 25. And yeah, okay, not bad. Maybe just a bit more, maybe 55. I'll just quickly decrease the frequency to 0.5 as well. Oh, and how could I forget the tilt shake? This changes everything. Thing. Works just like the other settings, but this one adds a bit of rotation. I'm going to change the wave amp, so one will do for now. Let's see how it looks. Not bad. Okay, so this is the goal. The Z shake looks fine. The X shake doesn't look that good, so I'm just going to keep on increasing that to maybe like 125. I want it to swing. That's the kind of motion I want on my shake. I'm going to increase that to 125, as I said. I think 0 0.5 is fine. I'm going to scroll down. You know what? Let's take a break for a second because this, this is one of the issues that can happen with S shake. Because there are so many settings, even now I'm getting confused. I don't know which one to use. I just said I was going to change the tilt shake, but it seems like that's not really doing anything. So even when I try to increase the X shake, so if I just set it to 100, 250, it looks weird. Maybe it might be the uh, the Z shake. So if I just turn that down to maybe like 75, slightly better to what I imagined, but again, not really. So if I just increase the wave amp to four, there you go. I think I got it. Okay, perfect. Almost there. So it's it's really just about, uh, I think the word is backtracking, looking at the, uh, the changes you made before and just you know adjusting them so yeah z shake i think that was the one that was causing the issue it was a bit too high so i could go even like 55 50 maybe and now i finally got the swing like motion that i've been visualizing members you are the best thank you so much for your support if i decide to release a shake pack soon then you already know you're going to be getting it for free so thank you for watching peace